Hello, my name is Vitor Ventura. I'm a researcher with Cisco Talos, and I'm here to talk to you about the Do Not Firestarter. The Do Not Firestarter is a loader for the Android malware from the Do Not team. This team is a very, a very motivated team. They usually target Indian, Pakistan, and even Chinese targets. They have been around for quite a while, at least three, four years now. They have malware for Windows and also lately more for, for Android. This specific version, it's a loader for the, their usual Android malware. But this one is leveraging the Google Firebase cloud messaging ser service in order to contact the, the malware. <clears throat> so let's start by talking about the campaign. So they usually have chat applications that they lure their victims into installing. Uh, there are several ones. We focused on this one just for illustration purposes. So once the victim actually activates the malware, it will see the screens that you are seeing, and then it will receive a message saying that, the application is not supported. And another one saying that it's, un, it's being uninstalled. After that, the, the victim pretty much cannot see anything about the application on their usual interface. In order to actually see the application, it needs to go to the, to the applications list. But even there, it will seem like it's uninstalled. It will, it will show up in a, gray, in, a, in, a, in a gray icon. And if they check the permissions, all the permissions will be associated with something that they call system service. So in that way, it kind of gets disguised from the, the, the original ones, and the user may be fooled into believing that actually there is no application installed. Once the malware is activated, it will contact the C2, which is hard-coded, with some information. On that information is the Firebase Cloud Messaging Service token, which is something that the operators will need in order to contact the application using the Google infrastructure. Along with that information, there will go also geolocation co uh, coordinates, IP addresses, all sorts of, inform of information that will allow the malicious operators to decide if they should send the malicious payload into the, into the, the malware or not. At this point, there's no malicious code in there. So once they decide to send it, they will contact the Google infrastructure and they will send a link to the malware. The mal when, once the malware receives a message from the Firebase messaging service, it will check if there is an HTTPS link in there, and if there is, it will try to download that link. Once that, once that link is downloaded, it's a bundle or an APK, which is then loaded into the malware, and it, at this point, it has the full capability, and it will start to contact the C2. So it's not hard to see that if, for some reason, the hard-coded C2 is actually taken down, it's really easy for the operators to send a new Firebase message into the malware and give it another payload which has a different C2 hardcoded there. So what this really means is that there, it's not possible to stop the malware by taking the C2 down alone. You also need to actually take down the account for the Google Firebase cloud messaging service. Otherwise, the, mal the malware will keep running and the malicious operators can always get back into control. So in conclusion, without changing their victimology, they are evolving. They didn't develop a new malware. They developed a new loader that uses the, the old malware. And this new loader is packed with features to keep their operations running and to keep them as hidden as possible, but hidden in plain sight. So by using the Google Firebase messaging service, they are able to reach the malware even if the C the C2 is taken down. So this makes the this actually makes Google the only entity that can take down the malware. And this happens because even if the C2 is down, the, the phones will still be infected. And they are reachable by the Google Firebase messaging service. And it only takes <clears throat> do not team to one message to actually load a different malware or a different payload within the same, the same malware with a different configuration that it will reach out to a different C2 and they are still back in business. This also has a secondary effect, which is because now they can actually decide who receives the payload and who doesn't, they can avoid sandbox analysis. They can avoid researchers to get their payload 
We have seen several several iterations of this all running at the same time. So we believe that this is an experience to make them evolve their malware. You should definitely keep an eye out for this crew, for this team and for this kind of malware because for all the investment and all everything that they have done until now, they are not going away. And this is just the beginning of a whole new malware family that they will use. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please please reach out to us.